head shut. So I would write down things that he would say. I would, I would just, I was literally just like, and as a kid, like my, my passion for communication and understanding self, it was born out of that. It was born out of, hey, I need to process what's going on around me. So I stole the notebook and then I used it to my advantage. And I, I wrote on the front and back every page of the notebook. So that's how, that's how I became a writer. It was out of that, that desperation to process my own thoughts and my own feelings. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable that you were so young and able to make the dis conscious decision, like, I need to process my thoughts. That's very, quite remarkable, I feel. And, and you know, what you were saying about, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think, I think people are afraid to be bored um, because no one wants, I mean, the idea of sitting alone with yourself and your thoughts is scary. And, and I kind of, and I think I've said this before in another life, it's kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. all the baggage, all the, just everything kind of bad stuck in your head. I kind of envision it as like a little box in the corner of your mind. It's like in an empty attic and it's very ominous and it's sitting there and you kind of like, avoid looking at it and avoid going into it because you don't want to deal with all the stuff that's inside it but how how vital it is for us to have the time to sort through our own wounds and trauma and it's it's almost you know it's it's sad when when i find that some people can't be bored you know there's there's definitely some people who don't allow themselves that alone time they they, they drink, they do drugs, they go out all the time, they party, they're constantly with people because they can't sit with their own inner inner thoughts and their own voids that they have. And, it, and it's so, and it's interesting because, you know, it's like the longer you push it off, you're only creating, you're creating such a temporary happiness for yourself. And I kind of look at it as like, you're, you're, you're kind of just chasing these highs, these these moments that make you forget about your trauma and your and your emotional void, you know, when you're doing drugs or drinking or with people. Yeah, you're not thinking about your own shit. So, you know, the the more you keep distracting yourself, the bigger the void gets. And at the end of the day, the void is still there 